Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and you already know about Raylib the framework, but you know about Raylib the tools. This is a set of really handy, free, uh, simple utilities for common game development tasks. And the cool thing is, there is a GUI, but there's also a command line interface for all of these things. But first off, possibly you haven't heard of Raylib. If so, you're probably not subscribed to this channel, because I covered Raylib quite a few times. It's a great little C framework for creating games. It's based on the Borland BGI and XNA frameworks. Uh, for inspiration, you can learn this from a single cheat sheet, but this is a C library that does all of the stuff you need to do for game development. And as you can see, it does it on all of the major platforms out there. It's very modular, so you can use just the bits you want. There are language bindings for pretty much every single programming language. There's 50 language bindings at this point in time. Uh, it's broken down so that there's like math libraries and so on and so forth, but you can use just the bits you need. So if you don't want physics, you can ignore the physics part. You don't need the math libraries. You don't use the math parties, the libraries. You don't want the audio, et cetera, et cetera. So if you want to create games with zero external dependencies, one of the easiest ways to get up and running with C or C++ game development is Raylib. And it's very comprehensive. There's a good community behind it. You can see a breakdown of everything there, but we're not specifically talking about Raylib today. What we are talking about is Raylib's tools. These were recently published up independently up on itch.io. They're available at raylibtech.itch.io, and there's a number of them here. And again, everything we're looking at is downloadable for uh, either... Um, Windows or Linux versions, or you can also run it in the browser. Today, I'm going to showcase the browser versions, but you can download these for those two platforms. And if you download those for those platforms, you can actually use them from the command line. So what we have here is an audio generator, uh, a texture viewer slash file con format converter, uh, texture packer, uh, icon packer. So those are the four independent tools. Those can all be used. Uh, the results don't require Raylib at all in any way, shape, or form. And then there's three more we're not going to really cover today. GUI styler, GUI icons, and GUI layout. This is for creating uh, GUIs in and using working with Raylib. So we're going to focus on the four that work uh, Regardless, you can put them into your your own development pipeline. Again, with the command line interfaces, you can easily build on top of these or use them as part of a batch uh, process. Uh, very straightforward and clean on the go. So let's start with the first one. This one is a texture packer. This is a pretty common task. You've got a number of sprites. For example, these three sprites right here. I go ahead, I grab those sprites, and I simply drag them over to my uh, project and drop them in. And it's going to pack them into the space as good as possible. Now this is a 306 by 400 sprite and I have a 512 by 512 pack. What basically meant is I have room for one thing. So I'm gonna just go ahead, we'll change our texture size right here up to 1024 by 1024. And then it's just gonna pack them in as good as possible. You got control over things like uh, the padding between them, the spacing between them. Uh, there's two algorithms available for how to do this. So there's basic and uh, I think it's Skyline. Uh, it'll change how they're packed. Uh, you can pick relative to where they pack from. Uh, this makes more sense when you start having smaller things in here so they can rotate them and turn them and shove them in here. But that is what the uh, texture packer is all about. You're creating a sprite atlas. You export the atlas out. Uh, you can have it give you a uh, JSON file to describe what the file format is, etc. By the way, there is theming here. So there's different uh, color schemes. So if you want to have 1980s terminal look, you can do so. Now there's actually a second superpower for this little tool. And this one is actually quite handy is if you've got a font. So let's go here and grab this font. So this is a TTF file. And then let's go over here and drop that in our scene. What you'll see is it automatically generates the fonts for us. We could save out our fonts as well. So if you need to create a font file from a TTF, you can do so. Now these are bitmap fonts and you can actually control how big to make them. So let's go ahead and make these 64 by 64. Uh, we can force them all to be the same height so that every character is the same size. Again, you have control over the padding between them, the spacing, the size of the image to pack these into, and so on. So you can also use this thing as a uh, font generator, which is actually quite cool. And again, you can download these and use them from the command line. The uh, features are all available down here. Uh, the command line instructions are generally down below. I believe this one has a command line. Yeah, so you see, if you want to figure out what the commands are, just do a dash dash help when you're running it. Uh, supports a number of different file formats, ping, QOI, uh, Targa, JPEG. Uh, you can import OTF and TTF fonts. Um, and you can export it out as text, binary, JSON, XML, or actually as header files and C code. Um, 
So really cool project on the whole, probably the most useful of the things in this package uh, and, and something that you'll encounter at some point in time. Now, next up, we have the RFX Gen. This is a simple 8-bit style sound effects generator using this based off of SFXR. We've seen a lot of SFXR stuff on this channel in the past, and this here is one more. Pretty simple. You want to create simple sound effects, for example, coin, laser, explosion sounds, power-up noise, and you can control them down here. If you want to change things out, you can mutate them like so. And then if you like it, you can save it to a slot and then you can save your sound out. You've got control over how to save it. It could be various different uh, um, rates, bit quality, and then you can bring it out as raw wave or you can even dump it out as, cold, as a code. Um, and then you can pull it out and export the wave file out there. So very simple um, sound effects generator based off of F SFXR. Again, you can run it from the command line. So if you need to just create a bunch of sounds randomly, you can run them from them. Uh, nice thing again is the command line stuff allows you to like, chain it together into your own pipeline and create some pretty interesting tools. This last one, uh, no, second from last, I think. Uh, this is a straightforward image viewer. So let's go back here once again. Uh, we'll grab an image. No, just one. This one, you. All right, bring this over like so. Drop it in. Image viewer. So you can use this from the command line to quickly open up and view an image. The key thing here you could use it as is when you want to export out. Like so uh, you've got the ability to save it to PNG, QOI, RAW, or .h and export that out. So you can use this as uh, to convert the file formats you're working with. Um, you've got a number of different tools over here when working with the image. So for example, uh, this is becoming less and less of a thing, but uh, GPUs work better with power of two. So uh, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, et cetera, uh, by that sized images. So this can automatically pad out that image for us like so. We can pre-multiply the alpha. We can trim the alpha borders out. We can do some dithering calculations. Uh, we can do resizing. Uh, we can change the pixel format of our image uh, to work with your um uh, you know, the, the required formats you want. This is a really handy tool across the board simply because, um, again, you can use this from your command line to do batch changes. Again, there's the command line stuff. So if you want to do batch image processing or you want to convert a bunch of pings to JPEGs or you want to change the file encoding format or you want to key out so instead of having transparency you have a single pixel color in the background and that kind of stuff you can do this all with this guy our text viewer or you can just use it as a very simple image viewer again another handy tool to add to your toolbox uh, then we've got icon packer uh, this one's pretty straightforward on the whole a lot of times you're especially if you've done any web work if you create you know the, the little icon for your site you need to provide it in multiple resolutions some for like ipad some for phones some for desktop computers and so on this one basically you just send up an image you pick out the resolutions you want and you can create multiple different icons at the same time so you can import it in image formats uh, and then have it generate the icon file uh, extract them out as ping files and also as uh, .ico, which is required in some cases. So you need to create those icons, multiple resolutions. This is a quick and simple tool for doing that for you or for extracting out uh, packed icons if you so wish. And then we get into the three that are very specific to um, Raylib in general. If you're working with Raylib, these could be kind of cool for you. So this one is uh, an icons editor. So you can pack in a number of icons. You've got a little fat grid here for making your own if you wish. So we just created a new icon there. I should probably put it here. So you can create these icon resources. This is useful inside of Raylib. Um, I don't know that you would have much use for this outside of Raylib, uh, but you can see how to use the actual the code uh, on the Raylib side of things. So if you need to make use of icons in Raylib, uh, this is basically a tool for creating and packing them all together. Then we get into two for the GUI side of things. This one is for basically creating color themes. Um, We've seen that all along. Every single one of these tools has these different themes, like so, the different color schemes and so on. Well, this is what you use to create them. So let's say you've got a button. Um, and you can do the disable button color and so on uh, and save out the style. And then finally, uh, we have kind of a GUI creator tool here. So you can basically create visually create simple GUIs that you can then load up inside ArrayLib. So let's say if we want to put a button inside of our little window like so. There you see. So you can create these. Oh, I thought that would parent it. 
like so. And you know, you can define uh, various different properties. You see the controls down the side. I don't think there'll be a command line for this one because I don't know why you would, oh yeah, I guess you can. You can even run this one from a command line. Um, not sure what you would command line for a visual GUI designer, but uh, if you need to create UIs in the Raylib frameworks, that's what this one is all about. So those final three tools are specific to Raylib itself. Uh, and then the first four we looked at, RFX Gen, our text packer, those viewer packer and icon packer, those can be used with any game engine, with any technologies you want, or if you're rolling your own. These are things that you commonly need to do. Image conversion, people do it all the time, changing the bit depth, changing the file formats, etc. Text viewer is what's capable of doing that, piling a bunch of images together into a single texture atlas, especially when you got say multiple frames of animation, you want to put them all into the same spot. Our text packer is all about that. Uh, simple sound effects based off SFX, SFXR, and then finally an icon creation tool. All really handy stuff. As you saw, every single thing we just looked at here too also runs in a browser and are available as downloads for the um, Windows and Linux versions available. No Mac version, which is a little bit strange. So anyways, those are all available up on um, itch.io, again, at raylibtech.itch.io. And if you're interested in Raylib itself, it's available at raylib.com. I've done a number of videos on Raylib in the past. If you have never checked it out and you were looking for a simple C or C++ framework, it's a great choice. And if you've ever wanted to learn game development, but those are the languages you want to work with, I highly recommend checking out Raylib. It is perfect for that. But the tools we looked at today, they are standalone specific. Well, three of them are specific to Raylib, but four of those tools can be used regardless to what your tool chain is. And again, they're all command line based as well. So you've got a GUI or a command line and that um, command line functionality makes it easy to integrate those tools into a broader tool chain. Definitely uh, cool stuff worth checking out. And hopefully you guys found that useful. That's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.